Hi, we're Britt and Mike, and this is Leah. We're converting our 2021 Ford Transit van into a home on wheels. Last week, we built the frame for our bench seat, and in this week's video, we're building out our lower kitchen cabinets. Oh my gosh. It's gigantic! <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome hey back to Van Build episode 26. We are working on kitchen cabinetry this week, so we brought our fridge out and we'll bring out the oven so that we can sort of see what the space actually is going to look like with these appliances in. Uh, and the fridge turned out to be enormous, <laughs> which we knew when we bought it that we were buying a big fridge, like as far as van life goes, but it's just a big fridge, like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think, I've unboxed it before and I've measured it and stuff to make sure that it was going to fit in the space. And so I'd seen it, but Britt hadn't, open, hadn't oh seen the open box. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're going to have so much room. Is that going to fit? It'll fit. It's very, it's very tight, but it'll fit. So I guess this is our walkway. How funny. Yeah, I mean, that's about what you expect out of a van build. Yep. Just picture this a little bit, uh, just a little bit tighter. I'm just gonna be happy to have this filled in with cabinetry so that I don't hit my head on this part anymore. Cause it's not, has not been fun. It's been treacherous. <laughs> okay, so after much deliberation, we think we have figured out the plan for the kitchen cabinetry. As you saw last week, subject to change, but um, here's what we're thinking. So the biggest piece that kind of determined the layout is the fridge. So I think we have a 75 liter Dometic 12 volt fridge. Um, I'll put the link in the description, but I think it's 75 liters. It's basically perfect size to come out on drawer slides into the hallway, and then we can access it from standing on either side of it. Um, so that will be underneath, and then we'll have a 36 and a half foot countertop, including the butcher block on top. So we're going to build a 35 inch cabinet and then put a butcher block on top. Um, the sink will be here and then moving over here we'll have a divider with um, about 15 feet of storage space in the middle and so that'll be our plumbing, our water filter, drain pipes, that kind of stuff, trash can storage in here, maybe a couple drawers for silverware. And then over here is our oven. We sacrificed a lot of storage because we really love to cook with the oven. So we got an oven and a propane, it comes with a propane stovetop. And that'll be just a couple inches set off from the bed. We'll probably do like a half wall down here to prevent splash from the stove onto the bed. We didn't want to put the stove that close, but that's just the way it worked out with how big the fridge is. And then the last thing is that we're doing a toe kick under the cabinet so we'll have what three inches tall yeah how, how deep three three inches three by three okay all right guys so i don't know about you but i need to make everything make sense in my head 100 percent before i start a project so i think i've got a really good idea of how this needs to go what cuts i need to make and so on and so forth i've already got some plywood laid out ready to get started cutting out my first piece and uh wish me luck man i really don't want to mess this up it's the next day let me show you what i'm working on this morning this is a template of the piece that i made yesterday uh, i just copied it out or traced it out exactly and then cut around the wheel well cut around this uh two by six up here and just made it fit the space perfectly so i could put it up flush up against the bed the piece that i made is going to be out over here somewhere as you can see our countertop is higher than the bed platform uh, that was intentional i wanted my bed to sit a little bit lower than the countertop so that with a mattress on it it would be in the same ballpark range but yeah i'm gonna have to build this up in order to build onto this because I don't want to do a second uh, support like this and have to attach the whole thing here. It's just a little bit added unnecessary weight where I can just build up off of this and uh, get the same results. So that's my plan right now. I think what I want to do is build it up kind of like this so that we get more than we need to meet the countertop height and we have enough to make a splash guard out of basically so that when we're cooking here or whatever, we don't have to worry about getting stuff on the bed. So just imagine a little wall right here. I'm uh, ready to get working on this piece 
And then once I have that done, I can start connecting these two together and fitting our oven into place, which will be fun. And for clarification, that doesn't mean that I'll be installing the oven today. I'm just uh, fitting the space for the oven so that it can seat correctly in the cabinetry before I move on. All right, guys, there it is. I got the uh, splash guard slash, I don't know, partition built and installed. I'll reinforce it as I go as I'm building the cabinets out, but for now it's just held in with glue and pocket screws, but it will be reinforced, I promise. After slaving away in this all day and feeling like nothing was happening, I finally am making some real progress on this. And here are a couple of the issues that I had to troubleshoot. Let's walk through them real quick. So the first issue was a two part issue. Uh, one, our cabinets and our countertops are gonna go higher than the edge of the bed. So I had to build up the bed area. Um, in doing that, I also wanted to add a splash guard so that with our oven here, we won't be getting stuff on the bed. This is how I did that. The second issue that I came across was how do you get this side to line up with this side when they're not the same shape? And the answer for that was a stencil. So I made a stencil the exact same shape as this. I had to cut out the wheel well, I had to cut out this piece, and then I was able to just slide this into place over here and then I was able to trace around it so I know exactly where everything needs to line up when I'm putting these cross members in everything will be nice and square and flat and flush and should line up really nicely and then I'm also having some issues in this place in this space because I can't run a another cross member across the front here because this is where our oven is going to be so I have to figure out exactly the height of the oven and build a cross member and a shelf that goes across somewhere towards the middle of this. That's gonna be probably the main component that's gonna hold this part of the, of the uh, cabinetry in place. What's up? It's the next day. I'm actually still currently working on the cabinet where the uh, oven is gonna mount. Basically, I need to figure out exactly how much I need to build it up on the sides, at the top, and on the bottom where the oven's gonna sit and uh, build the cabinet around the oven. <laughs> so it's been a little challenging, I mean, figuring out exactly where to mount everything so it's gonna sit the way that I want it to sit. But what I've come up with is about an inch and a half below where the countertop sits, our oven's gonna mount. And the reason for that is we wanna have a lift up countertop a la Trenton Alley and uh, have this extra counter space when we're not using the oven. So that requires a lot of extra thought that has to go into everything that I'm doing here. But if we mount it an inch and a half lower, that should be enough space for the range top to fit underneath the countertop. And then 15 inches and three quarters from there is where the bottom of the oven's gonna sit. So I can go ahead and build out the sides and reinforce the bottom here. And I think be in a good spot to move on to the next box. I've gone ahead and built out the cabinet and took the stove in here to pre-fit it into place and see if it works the way it's supposed to work. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the only thing that I'm not happy with is how far it sticks out into the hallway. You see the handle sticks out pretty far and this is without any cabinet faces on it. So I think I'm going to try to modify it so maybe the oven can sit a little bit more inlaid, but we'll see if that works. Okay, so this is what the area looks like built up that I've already done. I think in order to inlay the oven a little bit, I can just slide this front piece back about an inch and both of these pieces back an inch as well on either side, this one and this one. And then uh, I need to fill in this gap anyways around the back side. So what I think I'm gonna do is this from this point here to right here is about three and seven eighths inches, I think. So I'm gonna cut strips the same way that I did here and slide these ones back and then do vertical strips in the front here. And I think that'll close up all the space around this and uh, fill in the gaps as well as 
being able to push it back will hopefully give us a little bit more room in the hallway, about an inch more room. Okay, so I've got this thing recut, everything pushed back, and these gaps back here filled in. That should give us an extra inch to play with and hopefully still be just as functional. But there's only one way to find out. Let's check it out. All right, I think that had the desired effect. Now the handle is much less intrusive into our walkway. And then we're gonna have a face frame on this, so it's gonna come out just a little bit further on the sides, but we're not gonna be able to do anything in this space. We'll just have to paint this, make it look nice. But that shouldn't be a problem. What's going on everyone? It's a new day. I've just been hard at work doing some finishing touches on this cabinet where the oven mounts. Let me show you what I did. Previously, there was a gap behind the oven here. I went ahead and I filled that. All the ventilation still has the same amount of room that it's, it's built for, but that gap in the back is closed now. And then in the front, because I want this to be inset, but I still wanna do my face frames on my cabinets, I uh, had to build out this piece here so that my face frame can attach to it. And then I had to do this little guy down here, this little strip to close the gap. So all that'll be painted in. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll either paint this the same color as the cabinets or maybe black or something to hide it a little better. But yeah, that'll all be filled in with paint. And then we'll have face frames on the outside of this, drawers, cupboards, all that type of stuff. It'll all come out from here and it won't come out any further than the oven comes out already. So I think that works out really nicely. I also put a little piece of ply here because when I put my face frame on, I wanna be able to attach it all the way around the edges. Yeah, we are effectively done with this guy. The next cabinet frame is gonna be the middle one, which will be kind of like a cupboard on the bottom with drawers above it, uh, just a standard cabinet. It doesn't have to mount anything in it special. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to get this one done because I think it's going to go a lot easier than the one I just did and the one I'm going to have to do after it. Uh, we have to store the fridge under it, so it's going to take a lot of planning for that one as well. Not just that, but it also comes out in front of the doorway, so I have to figure out how to frame in front of the doorway on the back side and make it all look nice. So in that last time lapse, you saw me put another board on the table after cutting one already, and that's because I cut it wrong and had to redo it. So I actually cut it wrong the second time, but at least the second time I made it too big. <laughs> I don't know what's going on today. It's just one of those mornings, I guess. But now I've got it cut out to the correct size, and uh, I just got to trim a little bit off the top, and then we'll be ready to notch out our toe kick and go on with this cabinet. Okay, so here's a little trick that I had to learn myself <laughs> that would have saved me a little bit of headache earlier on in our cabinet builds. And I don't know why I didn't think to share this sooner, but it really helps if you stagger your pocket holes. So these two boards in front of us have about the same width on the pocket holes. And as you can see, if I were to join these together with a center piece between them, these two screws are gonna hit each other. So you'll get one screw all the way in and the next one you'll go to put it in and it'll go about halfway in and then you'll be kind of stuck with this hole that you can't use. And then the odds are the other one's gonna line up similarly and you're gonna be stuck in a situation where you have to recut this board and drill up new pocket holes. But if you stagger your holes, do like what I'll do is I'll do some close to the outside on one piece or on one side and then close to the middle on the other side. And now when you put these together, your screws come in like so and uh, you don't have that problem. It's definitely a huge help. So now that we've got our center support cut out and all of our cross supports cut and pocket hold ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and start framing this thing out and uh, shouldn't take long at all before we have another box. filming from the closet. <laughs> the van is getting smaller inside, which is very exciting, but it makes filming um, uniquely challenging compared to the beginning of the build. <laughs> I'm exhausted. 
the high today is what 95 degrees yeah we're it's, roasting <laughs> it's almost that right now we're paying for the nice weather we had in the winter because the summer is just miserable <laughs> it's may it's oh my god it's may <laughs> i mean june july i ju i know we're gonna be much worse i gotta get this <laughs> stuff done cool all right here's where we are leaving off today good job <laughs> <laughs> I love how the oven has its like its own little basket. So cute. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to another episode of Mike Complains About the Weather. Today's forecast is wind. So before I can build out this last section of cabinetry, I have to figure out what the difference is from the back of this cabinet to the front of the platform here that we're going to mount it on. By doing some measurements, I took a square, put it up against this, and measured out the distance between the wall and the square, and it came out to one inch. So that's a really convenient number to work off of. So I take the same tape measure and measure from the square to the end of the platform here, and I get an inch and three quarters. What that means is this is going to work out perfectly. Uh, what I can do is run a couple of back supports across here. I can build the end piece the exact same size as this piece, connect it with those back supports, and then that last three quarters of an inch that's going to be on the back side there can just be the back piece of the cabinet, the three quarter inch ply that we're going to use to, to finish off the back side. And it should go nice and flush right along the cutout that we made. So really convenient. It worked out that way. Sometimes things do. <laughs> Sorry if the audio is bad. We are fighting a windstorm and an adorable little water fountain in my parents' front yard right now. So <laughs> we do what we can. This is probably the last time we're gonna be able to sit in this doorway together <laughs> comfortably. We are putting in the third and final piece of the skeleton of the kitchen cabinet, basically. Yeah, it's gonna really change the space. <laughs> So the next thing on the list is Mike's going to build out a trim piece to finish off this corner here from when we framed. What's up guys? It's Saturday. This video goes up tomorrow and uh, we just need to finish up the back of this cabinet here. The last thing I worked on yesterday, which I really didn't show you guys, was this piece of trim right here because with the cabinet coming in right here in this corner, I wanted to do that before we close that off and uh, make it harder for myself to trim that out. So now there's no more gap there, or at least not much of one. And then as far as this cabinet goes, it's gonna be about 29, almost 30 inches, 29 and 13 16 at the top. And then it's gonna be about two inches more narrow at the bottom because we got this little pillar coming out down here. We just gotta work up around that. And I wanna close this gap up all the way to the top here, so. I think about eight inches down, it'll come in about two inches and then it'll go the rest of the way down. You won't be able to see it behind this. All right, so we're ready to attach the back piece. I've kind of like went back and forth on how, to, how what the best way to attach it is. I think what I've settled on is, it's gonna be a combination. So I'm gonna do pocket holes here, uh, but to line it up and get it in the right place, I'm gonna use some glue and some brad nails, line it up perfectly. Brad nail it into place and then attach my pocket holes. Use a clamp so that the screws don't push it out at all. And uh, that way I can get the edge over here just like nice and square and, and perfect. If it's an eighth of an inch out at the bottom or the top or whatever, it's gonna be very obvious because it's literally the first thing you're gonna see every time you open the door, so. I 
look like the guy who drinks way too much Bud Light at the concert and then like, <laughs> gets into a fight. With your outfit? <laughs> yeah. Okay, on that note, we're going to wrap up the vlog here. <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and follow along next week. See you next week. Bye, guys.